Hey, what's up? It's Trent uh, Grinkmeyer. Uh, today, I wanted to hit upon a couple things that I am watching when it comes to correlation and indicators of where this market could be headed uh, in the near future. Now, I look at the world in 90-day terms, and what do I mean by that? I believe a trend is at least 90-day periods of time. A trade is more like three days, that kind of thing. So 90 days gives me a really nice solid trend of where everything is is headed at this point. And recently, I've been looking heavily at the US dollar um, and its correlation to uh, uh, stocks and to commodities. Um, I'm looking at um, implied volatility and premium versus discount versus the last 30 days. Um, and then I'm looking at uh, what I would refer to, sorry, I'm looking at my notes here. Um, what I also am looking at is what is the next president, whoever it is, what are they going to do when it comes to spending and producing more U.S. dollars? So let's hit upon the U.S. dollar side of things in its correlation to a couple different areas. First of all, the U.S. dollar when we were back in March and the whole pandemic was hitting and there was a flood of, um, of money flowing out of treasuries into U.S. dollars to create liquidity, we saw the dollar jump over a dollar, being worth over a dollar. I think it was a dollar five or so at the time. Since then, uh, stimulus came into the system and devalued the US dollar to the point of right around 92 cents on the dollar. Well, if you think about that, if this is stocks and this is dollars and dollars uh, increase in value, stocks go down. So devaluation of the stock market uh, in, in commodity markets and uh, emerging markets, those kind of things. But whereas the dollar was printing and we're overloading the, the supply of dollars, we're increasing, we're decreasing the U.S. the value of the U.S. dollar, which means we're decreasing our purchasing power. So for you and I at home, cost of goods actually goes up. It's an inflationary kind of environment. And so we had a massive injection of U.S. dollars into the system and the stock market went up. Um, uh, EEM, emerging markets went up, commodities went up. Not so much oil, but corn, um, those kind of commodities uh, that, that when you refer to commodities. So that went up. Well, in the last couple of weeks, we have had a increase in the U.S. dollar and we had a decrease in the stock market. Interesting, huh? Um, it's a pretty much, a, I believe, a negative between 80 and 95 percent correlation between the two. And so... When one goes up, one goes down, it's almost one-to-one -to, -one to a point. Um, and so now we're seeing the U.S. dollar devalue again, and we're headed back down. So I didn't catch all of the, uh, the debates here on uh, yesterday, which was Thursday the 22nd. Uh, um, but there was a lot, from what I understand and what I've read, there was a lot of talk about spending. When you have to spend, you have to in, have money to spend, right? You have to increase your dollar uh, capacity. And what I think we can expect in the coming, oh, four years is a devalue, devaluing of the U.S. dollar, which takes us from uh, what I call a sector four, and that's a recessionary, depressionary environment, which we were in in March, April, to um, right now back into a sector three uh, market and um, that kind of environment um, where it's more stagflation. So if you're familiar with the Carter administration during the 70s, you had slowing growth and rising costs. I mean, I had clients, I've had clients who tell me their first mortgage had, was like a 15% um, interest rate on it. 15%. Can you imagine in a day where you can get a mortgage for less than 3%? That's insane. Well, that's the environment we're entering. And we have been in for like probably the last quarter or so is a deflationary environment or a um, uh, inflationary environment. 
and a slowing growth environment. And so we're back into that kind of environment right now. Um, so what does well in that area? Well, look at the correlation between the US dollar and those other assets. Technology, correlation, opposite. Uh, emerging markets, opposite. Commodities, opposite. Um, and so you look at those kind of things and it's it's like, okay, are we back into a bull market yet we're entering, we're back into a recession kind of environment? Probably. I always I always argue the the unemployment's the real unemployment numbers. And when unemployment numbers are really not great, well then you got people out of work. And so that means there's more demand on the government to support them. And you got less people in the workforce, so you're generating less revenue. If you generate less revenue, you have slowing growth. But if the dollar is being devalued because our government continues to print and print and print and print, well, then you've got a inflationary environment. Growth slowing, inflation going higher. Okay, with that said... If you look at implied volatility, and basically what you're looking at is premium discount. Um, there's an area of the uh, markets you can invest in where people um, can place hedges or uh, bullish bets with very little money. Um, I'm sorry I can't really mention the name of this, but I think you can put the two and two together. Well, when markets go down, the premiums on hedging... Uh, assets go up. It's a counter, it's an opposite of what you're thinking. So if markets are going down and the premiums on hedging those positions goes up, it's actually a bullish signal. So it's, they're trading at a premium. And over the last 30 days, you've gone from a, um, a discounted environment where people were more bullish and the cost of these hedges was cheaper. And so um, they they were more at a, uh, a bearish environment, and so we saw the stock market go down. So take any one of your favorite stocks like Apple or Amazon or, or just uh, a sector uh, or like a, the Qs or something, and go look at the uh, this 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 product. Um, and I'm sorry I can't mention it, but it's it's it, I'm regulated, and that's just the way it is. And so you guys put the two and two together. Well. The discounts have de have gone to premiums, so people are taking more hedging positions to hedge their portfolios of risk, which is a um, a indication that things are becoming more and more bullish. So premiums on like the Qs have just skyrocketed versus 30 days ago, which is a bullish indicator for me. Devaluation of the dollar, implied volatility uh, at a premium. Um, and then long term, the next four years, infrastructure spending decrease the uh, devalue the U.S. dollar. It becomes a bullish environment, a bullish uh, mix of things. And so, what I'm looking at is where is that money going to flow to? You know, is it the Internet of Things? Is it infrastructure build out? Uh, is it um, you know, especially infrastructure build out for 5G? Um, is it that those technology things? And then also remember, technology is not just software. It's not just um, you know computers and stuff. It can be healthcare technology. I mean, think about you know the the Apple uh, iPhone or uh, I yeah iPhone 12. It's got a healthcare mechanism, and so that's healthcare technology. So take that in account when you're diversifying your portfolio. Um, the other thing is just. Where else can we do well? Where else, what other sectors will do well in a um, invol, 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 implied volatility premium environment, a uh, ro, uh, decreasing or devaluing U.S. dollar environment? Where is money going to flow? What companies are going to do well? And so as you're risk managing and allocating your portfolio, those are the things I think you need to start thinking about. But look at those indicators like the U.S. dollar, implied volatility, premium, and discount, and where are our leaders going to take us when it comes to the relationship of printing money? That's what you got to do today.